everyone. So today we are looking at lead code number 162. It is a question called find the peak element. And it is a little bit tricky. There are two ways we can approach this question. We can use an intuitive approach or we can use a more, um, a more optimized approach, but it's not intuitive. Uh, and so what we want to do is look for clues in the question, which I'll show you where they kind of lead us in that direction. Uh, to, to use a more optimal strategy. So let's take a look at the prompt. So here we have a peak element is an element that is strictly greater than its neighbors. And so we're going to be given an integer array nums. We want to find the peak element and return the index. And if the array contains multiple peaks, just return the index of any of the peaks. Okay, so here we have one, two, three, one, and we can see this three is greater than the previous and the next, and so we return the index, which is two. And here we have two peaks. We have a peak here at two because it is greater than the adjacent values, which is one and one. And we have a peak here at six because six is greater than four. It's also greater than five. Okay, and then here we have some constraints. Uh, the length of our input is not going to be greater than a thousand. Um, a wide range of numbers that we can have. And then this is a very important clue. Nums of i does not equal nums of i plus one for all valid uh, i. And then here's another clue, the follow-up. Could you implement this solution with logarithmic complexity? Okay, so when they start mentioning logarithmic complexity and nums of i does not equal nums of i plus one, we, they're giving us a clue to use binary search. Okay, so we could do a binary search on this and accomplish solving this problem with log n time. It's not, it's not entirely obvious, so we're gonna go over the more intuitive approach. And usually I think uh, an interviewer would probably give you the hint or kind of lead you into the more elegant or the more optimized solution, which would be using binary search on this. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, how we would approach this using a more uh, intuitive solution and then we'll go into the more optimized solution. Okay, so here we have our array 1213564. Now we have to have three initial base cases that we can check for. We can check is this zeroth number larger than the number ahead? Okay, if it is then we can know that we have a peak right here and we can just return the zeroth index. Similarly, on the end, we can check, is this last number here greater than the second to last number? If it is, then we know we have a peak right there, and we can just, we don't have to scan through the array or anything. We just found the peak at the beginning or the end. And the third edge case is, is what if the input is just one? It's just one number. Okay, if that's the case, then we have a peak at one, and we just want to return, you know, we want to return zero. Okay, because one number inside that array is still a peak. Now, if we don't match those three cases, what do we do? Okay, well, all we want to do is we want to scan through this array and grab three of the inputs. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to start here at 1, 2, 1, and we're going to grab all three of these. So we're going to say this is going to be our right, this is going to be our middle, and this is going to be our left. I'm sorry, I have that backwards. We're going to do left middle and right. And all we have to do is check, is the middle value greater than the left and the right? If it is, then just go ahead and return the middle index, which will be one. Okay, if it's not, then we just continue our scan one by one until we get to the second of the last or the third of the last at five, six, seven, and then this is gonna be our left, middle, and right and we're gonna see that this is a peak, and then we just go ahead and return this index, which is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and so what would our time and space complexity using this approach be? Well, worst case, we would have to scan through the entire array, so our time complexity here is gonna be linear. And what about space complexity? Well, we are going to have to create some new variables, but we're not going to be creating any extra space relative to the size of the input, so our space complexity is going to be constant.
Okay, so now let's go ahead and code this up. After we code this up, we'll go ahead and look at a more optimal solution using binary search. Okay, so we first want to check for our three edge cases. So we got we want to check if the nums array is just one element, then we just want to return the zeroth index. So if nums.length equals one, we just go ahead and return zero. Okay, now we want to check if the very first element is larger than the second element. If that's the true, then we also return zero. So if nums at zero is greater than nums at one, return zero. And the last case is if this, um, if the last element is greater than the second to last element, Okay, we just want to return um, the last index. All right, and so now that we figure that out, we've gotten through that, then we just want to scan through the array. If those, none of those base cases match, we just scan through the array and compare the left and the right and the mid. So we can say for let i equals zero, i is less than nums dot length minus two. We're going to do minus two because we don't need to scan to all, the, all the way to the end of the array. We just want to scan um, to the third, the third leftmost, the third uh, rightmost um, value. Okay, so here we're going to get our let left, which is going to be nums at i, let mid, which is going to be nums at i plus one and let right, which is going to be nums at i plus 2. And now we just want to check if mid is greater than left and mid is greater than right, return i plus 1. And that will be uh, our peak element. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, if, oh, we want to do mid, not min. There we go. Okay, and we're good. Okay, so that is a, a, an intuitive way of solving this. And it's pretty good time and space complexity. Let's take a look at using binary search. This is a, not really the most intuitive way, but if you know the pattern for binary search, and if you get the right clues, and if you pick up on these clues, the biggest one is logarithmic complexity. Um, and so that's a huge clue into binary search. But we'll take a look at using binary search to, to solve this. And it's, it's log n time, so it's, it's much better. Okay, so let me let me just go ahead and clear out this the stuff here that I have here. Okay, so let me just go back. Okay, let's just clear it out. We'll just do a new one, two, one, three, five, six, four. So we have one. Whoops. One, two, one, three, five, six, four. Okay, so that's going to be our input array. Now let's take a look at using binary search. And let's just go ahead and mark our indices here as well. I'll do it in blue. Okay, so how does binary search work? Well, what we want to do is we want to create a while loop. We want to check while left is less than right, where left is the indice and right is the last indice. Okay, so left is going to equal zero, right is going to equal uh, nums dot len minus one. Okay, in, th in this case, it's going to be six. Okay, 
And then what we want to do is we want to get the mid. And how do we get the mid? Well, we're going to add left and right and floor it divided by two, or divided by two and then floor it. Okay, so mid is going to equal left plus right divided by two. And then we're going to floor this. Okay, so in this case here, we're going to have, I'm going to go ahead and just erase this over here so it's, we have a little more space. Okay, so we're going to have our left pointer here, our right pointer, and the indices are 0 and 6, or 0 and, yeah, 0 and 6. We're going to add those two together, which equals 6, and we're going to divide it by 2. That's going to give us our mid right over here at 3. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to check if the mid is greater than mid plus 1. Okay. If it is, then we're going to move our right pointer. If it's not, then we're going to go ahead and move our left pointer to mid plus 1. Okay. And so then what we're going to do is go ahead and calculate a new mid. So let's just go ahead and write this out in the code as well. So we can say if nums at mid is greater than nums at mid plus 1, okay, if that's the case, then what do we want to do? We want to actually move our right pointer to mid, okay, else we want to move our left pointer to mid plus 1. Okay, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and move this left pointer to mid plus 1. Now we're going to calculate a new mid. It's going to be here. Okay, and we're going to run the same logic. Is the mid greater than mid plus 1? It is. So what are we going to do? We're going to move our right pointer over here. Okay, and now we're going to calculate a new mid. We're going to say 4 plus 5 is 9. Okay, 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. We're going to floor that. Okay, so now our mid is going to be here. And we're going to say, is the mid, is this nums of mid greater than nums of mid plus 1? It's not. So our left pointer now moves to mid plus 1, which is right over here. And then we're going to break out of the loop because left is no longer less than right and we're going to go ahead and return our left. Okay. I think we have it notated here as L. Okay, we're going to return our L. Hard to write in these small small spaces, but you get the idea. Okay, so that is using the binary search approach. It's very elegant. If you, if you have that template, that pattern down for binary search, um, it's a great way to implement this. And, uh, and then it gives you really good time. So our time complexity here is going to be O of log n. Okay, which is really good. And then our space complexity is just going to, it's still going to be constant because we're not creating any new space relative to the size of the input. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump into the code and see if we can do this using binary search. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to create our left, which is going to be 0. We want to create our right, which is going to be nums.length minus 1. And then we want to have our while loop, while left is less than right. Now what do we want to do? We want to get our mid. So let mid is going to equal math.floor. And then we'll do left plus right divided by 2. That'll give us our mid. And now we want to check if 
nums at mid is greater than nums at mid plus one. Okay. If it's greater, then what do we want to do? We want to move our right pointer over to mid. And if it's not, then we want to move our left pointer to mid plus one. All right, and then at the end, we just want to return left. Now, the important clue here is, <clears throat> is that nums of i, it does not equal nums of i plus one. If nums of i did equal nums of i plus one, meaning that you had duplicates, so like here at the end, you have six and four, but you had four, four, binary search will not work. It won't work then. Okay, so just to keep that in mind. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. And we're good. Okay, and you can see we're beating out um, a lot of the other submissions, 76% on, on time and 79% on space, which is really good. Okay, so that is leak code number 162, find the peak element. It is, it is a little bit of a tricky problem, but it's a fun problem. It's definitely one that you can solve easily in an interview just using logic and intuition and if you don't pick up on this clue here to use binary search the interviewer could lead you in that direction and as long as you have a clear idea of the binary search pattern you can go ahead and plug and play this right into that and get the optimal solution okay so that is lead code 162 find the peak element i hope you all enjoyed it and i will see you all on the next one